Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And in the last few months, I have beaten the subject to death regarding band saws and vices, especially drill press vices. And this last uh, video was very poorly received, so I know I'm doing too much of it. But getting back to the vertical band saws, they are so useful in a machine shop, and so very, very few people have them. They are very hard to find, and if you do find them, they are expensive, and I'm so thankful that I have two of them, and I featured several videos recently on my Craftsman vertical 15-inch metal cutting band saw. So this is the Boyce Crane, so I have one downstairs and one in the garage, but uh, since these are not really available, other than $2,500, $3,000, or something like that, or a do-all or a robe that is too heavy and too monstrous, to move, although they are the best, we have to uh, think smaller than that. And let's uh, sh let's talk a little bit about some alternatives to a vertical bandsaw. Now, a vertical bandsaw is so handy. Well, so is a horizontal. But I, I just go to this saw all the time. It's right near my bench. And uh, let me give you a few suggestions of what you might do in your own shop. Many of you own portable band saws, and here's a Porter Cable, genuine Porter Band, that's a trade name. And here's an older Black & Decker that I've had for many years. And these are uh, very reasonable used, and even uh, fairly reasonable new, if you buy one from a Horror Freight. And I've been told that they are satisfactory. I don't know, I haven't really used one. But many people have made videos regarding putting these band saws into a vertical position and using them as a vertical metal cutting band saw because they run at a nice slow speed the blades are cheap and readily available at any box store it's not something you have to order at an outrageous price so it would be a handy thing to use now you can only use half inch blades so you can't do a lot of whole uh, contour sawing or curves with a wider blade but it will suffice suffice so I'm going to show you how to make a very simple and well cheap it's it's free uh, the way I'm doing it and uh, a stand for this that will mount in the vise if there may be a part two if there's any demand for it, where I would make a freestanding stand for this one but I'm going to concentrate now on the Porta Band, and remember, Porta Band is a registered trademark. See the little R up there? So it's a, a word that means that it's made by Porter Cable. Porta Band. All right, let's get started. I've only owned this saw for a couple months. You may have watched the video where I buy it. I think I paid $25 for it, but normally they're handheld but we're going to mount it in a vertical position and put a little table on here. Now this is cardboard, but I just did a mock-up, so the table will go something like this. Matter of fact, exactly like that. And it will mount onto this uh, guide right here, just with a couple screws, so you can take it off very quickly. And then I will be welding a couple of pieces on here that will uh, give us a mounting point onto a bench vise. Now everybody's bench vise is going to vary according to where you have it mounted on the bench and how high it is, so you'll have to adjust for that. But let's see how this is going to work. I haven't made a prototype yet. I went down to the high school welding shop to see Mr. Taylor, my buddy, and I said I need a piece of 316 stock about this size. And he said, take a look around and see what you can find. Well, how fortuitous was it that this is almost exactly this, the same size? Well, it is the same size. So I took two of those free of charge. And all I'm going to have to do on this, of course, is round the corners a bit and take the burrs off because this has been sheared, but it is flat enough. And you can use different thicknesses. You could uh, use... Uh, quarter inch. It might be even better, although it's going to be a little bit heavier in weight. This is heavy enough the way it is. Probably weighs almost what the bandsaw does. So anyway, I'll round the corners and I'll make this cut and see how this is going to work. 
the first thing I'm going to do is put the slit in here. Now I'm going to use the bandsaw and I'll actually have to make two cuts. One cut isn't enough to give you a wide enough kerf in order to uh, mount it on the saw. So I'm going to make two little cuts side by side. Originally I considered using one of these slitting saws, but then I thought people watching this will not have a milling machine or the saws to make that cut and the setup is kind of laborious so it's just as fast to do it on the bandsaw but of course many of you are going to say well I don't have a bandsaw well you could use a deep throat type of hacksaw if you have one and it won't be easy but you're better off going over to a friend's house and using his bandsaw and breaking his blade <laughs> Note that I drilled a 3 sixteenths hole where I can terminate my two cuts and have the piece fall out of there. I temporarily have the bandsaw held in a big drill press vise so that I won't crush this, but I'm just doing that for fit up purposes and photography purposes. I just bought that vise, isn't that a beauty? Looks like the landscape of the moon. Alright, let's fit this up and see what it looks like. Not all bandsaws will be the same. <clears throat> this, these directions are specific toward the porta band so you'll have to examine yours and see what the guides and supports look like here. But let's see, that's going to fit up just about the way I wanted it to so it comes up almost against the frame right here and I've already laid out tentatively a couple holes here where you see the white paint right here and right here. Those will be 3 16 holes. I have to make sure they do not interfere with any of the other parts. This one here is questionable because if I drill back into here it's going to go into the frame. So let me take this off now. There's just two screws on the back side that hold this thing on. Right here. So I'll take those out and this piece will come off along with that lower guide. All right, I'll drill those two holes, 3 sixteenths. I've got two 3 sixteenths holes drilled as such, and I'll be using these flathead screws. Now the difficult thing is transferring these two holes onto the table plate. The table plate is temporarily clamped into place, and look what I did back here in the far corner. I used a, well, I guess it's a 5 sixteenths tool bit just as a parallel to kind of square the plate up with the frame of the porta band. And now I will transfer one hole and drill it and then do the exact same setup for the second one. I like to do one at a time so I don't spoil the piece. I have one screw in place, not countersunk yet, and now I will transfer the other one using a 3 16 transfer punch. I've got my spacing pretty good right here in comparison to the blade, relationship to the blade. So I will uh, mark that, drill it, and countersink and get right back to you. Okay, the two screws are in place. I'll use lock washers on the bottom as well during final assembly, but the reason I chose 3 16 or thicker is that in order to use a countersunk screw like this you need a fair amount of thickness so that it will be flush. For instance right here that isn't even flush yet. It's not uh, countersunk deep enough, but these are flush. Another thing now, is this table mounted square to the blade? Yes, quite square, thank goodness. Not a whole lot I could do about it other than to shim it. But 
we'll only be cutting rather thin stock with this anyway. There won't be any four inch stock shoved through there. It's for cutting plates and small pieces. Now next, just how rigid or solid is this table? Alright, I'm going to now lift the saw and manipulate it and move it around. It seems to be pretty sturdy. And it is what it is. And that's what it looks like from the bottom. Now it would also be possible at this time to build this as a freestanding unit by boxing this in with metal or you could use wood like some of the commercially made stands that are available. But I'm going to do it a different way, at least for the porta band. And how to mount this to the vise, you're thinking. Well, I'm using this 3 8 stock. It's simply something that I have. It's heavier than what I really need, probably quarter inch would do. But a piece of this cut off and bolted on, something like that, will work. And then the other piece Weld it onto it, and this is what will be held in the bench vise. There's all kinds of other ways of doing it. In fact, uh, you could use angle iron and other materials so that everything is held together with screws and bolts rather than welding. Well, two weeks has passed since I worked on this project. I've been traveling a bit and the weather turned sour here in Illinois and it was too cold to go out in the garage. I needed to do some welding. So, uh, and by the way, I visited uh, the Ark Encounter in uh, Kentucky. If you don't know what that is, it's uh, Noah's Ark uh, reconstructed. It was just a wonderful exhibit. So check that out if you ever get that way. I really, really enjoyed it. We went on a bus trip for old people. But let's get back to this now. There will be <laughs> lacking some continuity here. And uh, as you can see, I progressed on it a little bit farther than I wanted to without filming it. And some film was lost for whatever reason. So let me back up a little bit here and we'll get going on this, all right? Here I am standing in front of the ark. You wouldn't believe how big it is. Some of you perhaps have been there. Inside the ark there are many exhibits. Would you believe who this is? This is Tubal Cain. There he is again. That's me. Thousands and thousands of years ago, I guess. Back to the subject at hand. I have already fabricated this piece, so you're not going to get to see that, but it's probably not necessary anyway. But this again is 2 inch wide by 3 8 thick hot roll stock, and I did notch it here a little bit to fit up against this guide, probably totally unnecessary. And I drilled quarter inch holes, and then transferred them, and these holes are drilled and tapped, yeah, well, one fourth fine, which is one fourth uh, 28, quarter 28. <laughs> and the grade five, simply because it's hard to find fine threads that are not hardened, but they don't need to be hardened. I got some deburring to do here, and I, I welded this up. It's just T shaped, and uh, this is way too long at the present time. But this is the part that will be held into the vise. Now I know that some of you are going to say, well that's not rigid enough for what you're doing, but it really is rigid enough. I was kind of surprised how rigid it is and very satisfied and happy that it is. So let me go ahead and bolt this back on like that. And the bolts had to be cut to just the right length so they do not protrude, I like that word, on the top side. All right, ready to go on, and later on, probably not even in this video, I will cut this off to, you know, whatever length I need. And it's really going to vary with you people, if anybody actually would make this, depending on the vise that you have, 
the height of the vise, the position of the vise on the bench, whether this is going to be a right or left hand mounted, this mounts to the left side because I like my bench vise on the right hand corner of the bench, but some of you will even have them mounted in the middle. That is the vise someplace in the middle of the bench, although to me that seems like it's in the way. Now we need some kind of switch for this, and I've had this Dayton foot switch in stock here, and I never have used it. I actually kind of forgot that I had it, but then it dawned on me. But I will plug the porta band into this grounded outlet, and then this cord, of course, plugs into the wall, and this is foot operated. It's just on and off, it's not variable speed. This particular bandsaw has a variable speed right here. Not all of them have that, I don't suppose. Then the bandsaw switch has to be locked in the on position. Fortunately, this bandsaw, and it kind of surprises me, has that lock, kind of like many electric drills used to have. And if you don't have that, you'll have to either use black tape or a wire tie to keep that on so that all of your uh, electrical control is with the foot switch. This is going to be pretty awesome. And here's how it works. A foot, a foot switch can be dangerous. I don't mean just because you might trip over it, but sometimes you might step on this by accident, so be sure and unplug things for safety purposes if uh, you're in doubt about the safety of the situation. And here is how this is going to work. I'm going to take the saw, and I would like some of the weight to rest right on the handle here. Not all of it by the bracket, but that's can vary depending on the application. But this is going to go into the vise like that, and then again it's resting down here, and trying to make sure that it's approximately in the vertical position, that is plumb. And it's ready to go. Looking at the top of the table now, notice that the bolts here are flush. And so are the flat heads. Now later on, in a few minutes, after I'm done with this part of the demonstration, I am going to round all four corners because this is a bit hazardous right now. Kind of sharp, so I'm going to round those real nice. But notice how nicely the slot lines up. And as I showed you before, the table is mounted square with the blade. Now one of the uh, downfalls of this type of saw is you cannot bring this guide down close to the work like you would with a regular vertical band saw. That's always bad. Also, there's more uh, blade exposed such that it is a hazard and it is dangerous. So be very careful with your fingers and your hands and, and so on when using this. But it does work quite well. And again, I'm going to put this push on the switch. Kind of noisy. Notice how rigid this is. I'm really surprised because it's only being held by the two screws to the bandsaw itself. I'm really pleased with that. And that's why I think this is a great method if you have a bench vise as opposed to the freestanding ones that have a little bit of a boxed in uh, deal. Because if they set on the bench you're going to have to get, get them clamped down because you need to exert quite a bit of pressure against a piece of metal when you're cutting it in a bandsaw. It's not like a wood saw. You have to push real hard. Wear your safety glasses. This is 3 eighths aluminum, but of course this blade really is meant for steel 
it's coarse, it's not a skip tooth blade, and it's running too slow. And we'll measure the speed here in a few minutes. That was pretty slow going because this blade was used even when I bought this uh, machine at an auction. So, you know, it's not in, in great condition, but it's okay. But it's the wrong blade for cutting aluminum. But we need to get by on these saws with universal blades that will cut any material that we happen to be doing in the shop because this is not a production shop. Because this is a half inch wide blade, it's not suitable at all for making uh, contour cuts. I mentioned that earlier in the video. But it can be used uh, very nicely for a cutoff saw, but for round stock, be sure and hold your work in a vise so it doesn't roll on you. Next I'm going to take the table back off and round off the corners and just soften the edges and all of that so uh, that a fellow uh, will not hurt himself just being around the darn thing. So I'm just using my fine point marker here on this template to round off, lay off the corners and then I'm going to saw them a bit. Well, how are you going to saw them? The saw <laughs> will be <laughs> taken apart. And that's the whole fallacy of this video is that I'm using this a saw to do a lot of the work but we don't really have a saw yet or you don't have a saw until you do this so you got to go over to the neighbors I guess and impose on them if they have a saw but very few people have a vertical band saw really that's what this is all about I do have the luxury of many bandsaws and many tools and I'm over at the Boyce Crane bandsaw right now to cut the majority of this off and then I'll finish off the radius on the belt center. But I was just thinking about, remember Norm Abram and the new Yankee workshop and uh, he'd make a chest of drawers in a half an hour out of the finest cherry wood and he had a hundred <laughs> machines all set up by, probably by a staff you know and so he was working uh, with uh, the greatest of luxury with a high budget and some of you guys and even myself I don't have much of a budget I'm just on a teacher's pension <laughs> All right, that looks better, doesn't it? And everything's deburred, looking pretty good. I should wire wheel some of the rust off, but I, I really can't be bothered. So now I'll go ahead and saw this piece off just a little bit, a couple inches off of there anyway, it's so big and cloddy. And then I will reassemble it off camera and be right back. There is some danger here because of the open wheels on really what amounts to the back side of the bandsaw. But everything in the shop is dangerous. So I've rounded off the corners. It looks better and it's much safer. Now let's check the speed of the blade. Remember this is a variable speed saw.
All right, that's the very lowest speed, and it's right at 100 feet per minute, and that's really good for steel. Now I will move it up to the very fastest. Okay, this is the maximum speed. And it's right at 300. There's a multiplier there because this is, has three different ranges. So the lowest speed was 100 feet, 100 feet per minute. The fastest was 300 feet per minute. And you, since it's variable speed, infinitely variable, supposedly, anywhere between 100 to 300 feet per minute is the capacity of the machine. 300 would be good for aluminum. Well, there it is. A little vertical bandsaw made from the little porta band. Vice mounted, but it could be held in other ways as well. But I think this is a good idea. Or well, maybe you don't. Let me know if you think it's a good idea because it's really quite sturdy. Be very handy in a shop where you don't have a regular bandsaw. And you could start with a little uh, horror freight saw for a hundred bucks and work that up. These saws will all be slightly different on the guides as far as how you're going to mount this, but that's just a general idea, something that you can do in your shop. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now. Leave a comment and watch my 1200 other shop videos.